Anthony Albanese has joined Canada and New Zealand um, for a ceasefire, some of his strongest um, messages since the October 7 attack. What do you make of that? I think it's window dressing mm -hmm. and attempting to uh, 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 appeal to the pro-Palestinian uh, cause um, because none of them have a solution. And I, I noticed even Kamala Harris when she met uh, Netanyahu in Washington said, I call for an immediate ceasefire, but Israel's got a right to defend itself. So nobody's got a solution because Hamas are not wi willing partners for peace. How can you sue for peace if you don't have a partner? And it seems that the regional Arab powers are not stepping in to help Hamas. None of them want Hamas in their territory. None of them want Hamas resurrected. And so everybody seems to have their own agenda. And I think this is a political move. And I, th I think it's uh, these that those governments, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, would be better off focused in finding solutions and demanding uh, the, the big powers f find a solution. At the moment, there is no solution. We're going to find out tomorrow the Cabinet reshuffle of the Labor government. Um, how do you see this for unfolding? Well, Albanese, uh, Prime Minister Albanese, has, of course, the Labor, New South Wales Labor Conference this weekend, and it will be likely to be disruptive outside by pro president Palestinian demonstrators, possibly inside. He wants to, as much harmony and discipline as possible, so he's delaying the announcement. It will be a minimal uh, reshuffle. Two are retiring. Uh, he will shift uh, the two underperforming ministers, Claire O'Neill in Home Affairs, Andrew Giles in Immigration. But he values stability above all else, and so I think he'll try to present it as business as normal. OK, and no doubt cost of living, housing and uh, immigration are the main issues um, in Parliament. We've got, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to know about uh, the inflation figures and potential interest rate rises, so all eyes on the, the RBA. What are the ramifications if we see what most people don't want to see, and that's uh, potentially you know, more interest rates, etc.? Exactly, Jane. I'm glad we, we've come back to uh, an event that will largely decide the next election. Mm -hmm. uh, the Olympics are going on, American politics are going on, reshuffles, uh, Hamas, uh, war, etc. It's distracting people, people temporarily from the key issue, which is interest rates and, of course, cost of living. Uh, so next week we get the inflation rate. It's 3.6 per cent at present, probably go to 3.8 per cent. Then the week after, the RBA has to decide what, how it responds in interest rates. If it puts up interest rates, sure, it will curb inflation, but Australia's Growth rate is anemic at 1%. It could push Australia into recession. They'll need the wisdom of Solomon. All right. And uh, the potential for an early election, what would you need to see for that to happen? It's a good question, and it relates to what, what the RBA does. Mm. If, it brings, if it takes up interest rates, then no election this year. If it maintains interest rates, there's still the possibility of a 7 December election. We'll have to wait and see. Always great to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Janie.